So as Giorgio said, uh, Sam came in 1966. Mel came from birth from uh, Colombia, and uh, they started the letter group Group G. So Panofsky set up eight letter groups, and Group G was the one that that uh, Stan and Mel did, and they built this absolutely beautiful spectrometer. Uh, so they were looking at K-long decays. In those days, it was a very hot and very uh, new topic. And uh, this is the point of so the uh, electron beam was brought out into what was called end station B, uh, produced secondaries of a target that the charged particles were either absorbed or swept away by magnets. And there was a long decay region here, and you had a beautiful clean beam of K longs. The key attribute of this experiment, perhaps, was the electromagnetic production of K longs, which meant you had very little neutrons in the beam as opposed to, say, proton produced K longs. So this was the detector. Uh, there was this decay volume for the K longs, and then a set of spark chambers, another set of spark chambers a magnet and so and and a muon filter and so one could trigger on say two particles in the spectrometer very cleanly uh, uh, looking at k-long decays in particular <clears throat> this is a catalog of this wonderful 10-year period and uh, if you peruse those those titles of those papers you'll see the breadth and the magnitude of this contribution uh, to particle physics. It was extremely enriching and extremely powerful. I apologize, I left the authors of this period, but I've given you an idea of time. So it was 10 years of extremely fruitful science. I also include here that Stan, in fact, was the person who promoted with Jasper the Delco experiment. Uh, that's, that's, yeah. Very rich uh, science. History and starting in 1967, so very soon after they came, that they were already making these first measurements. So, why the letter group named G? So, group G physicists, in fact, were not collecting data only, it seems, in particle physics, but also in the discipline of genetics, something that's not very well known. So Mel and Marilyn Schwartz arrived at Stanford. They had a son. The, the first birth of theirs next was a girl. Stan and Esther had three girls. My brother and his wife had a girl. John and Mary Lou, two girls. Jasper and Rita, two girls. <laughs> so when my wife fell pregnant in 1975, there was no reason to have a pre-birth test. We knew we were having a girl. <laughs> what popped out in March 1976 was our first daughter. We had a second daughter, but we were no longer part of Group G. <laughs> so this is who? In 67 to 76, there were 11 straight birds, <laughs> all girls, no boys. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, I don't know if Stan used this as an example in his lectures of statistical aberrations. <laughs> this is the only one. So, you know, perhaps Anne can survey <laughs> 23 and me databases to see if the hypothesis, which was that if you worked in a K long beam, you had girls. <laughs> and I should add that there was a group B at Slack, which was headed by David Lee. They didn't have this many, but they had predominantly like 90% of the births in group B were boys. <laughs> and they worked in charged tailing beams. So you can add this twist to the <laughs> possibility of understanding this. It was a wonderful experience, and I wanted to represent it here today. Thank you.